in nursing, there's this kind of like concept where people feel like they have to know everything when in real life, that's ridiculous. You could never know everything about the human body and all of the disease processes. Like I literally learn something new at work every day. Ooh, I gotta go. hey. I've been working, so them please don't hit my phone. I'm in my zone, bro. Just leave me alone. Hey. Was on the road, but I swear I'm coming home. Now the drinks on me, I think we need a toast. See, I did it for me. Now my old friends calling, told them nothing's for free. Told me time is money, dog. That's why I paid all my fees. I was starving for this game. Now my fan they can't eat. Hey everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Cup of Nurses show. Here with your hosts, Peter and Matt, two nurses on the mission to change this world, one conversation at a time. Thank you everyone for tuning in and taking the time. We really appreciate it. It means everything to us. Please share and review the show. Cupofnurses.com for the latest updates, merch releases, and show notes. For our lifestyle podcast, you can check out wearefrontlinewarriors.com. In this episode, we would like to introduce you to Lindsay McNiff. Lindsay is an ex-travel nurse now working in nursing education. Her background includes telemetry, medical surgical, step-down, and cardiac cath lab. She is currently a clinical nurse educator, professor, and a clinical instructor. We talk about dating and healthcare, transitioning from bedside to education, and we offer some advice every nurse should hear. Hey, Lindsay, thank you so much for being here. Can you give us a little bit of background about yourself, how you got into travel nursing, and now made the switch into, into education and being a clinical instructor and a professor? Yeah, of course. So I started my nursing career back in 2018. I started as a med surge nurse on a inpatient urology unit. Um, it was a great time. I had really great friends, but it was a really tough job. I would have like on the regular eight patients overnight. So it was a lot of patients, um, a lot of work. Um, so it was very, very challenging. Um, and then from there on, I moved on to travel nursing after about a year of nursing experience, which in hindsight, probably was a little fast, but um, it definitely fit my lifestyle. I was just ready to go out there and have some adventure and really just expand my knowledge and meet new people. So I was actually convinced by a friend of mine who is now my fiance. Um, we were friends at the time and he was like, you got to come to California. It's really be all better over here, <laughs> which is partially true for those of you who have traveled in California. Um, he told me about just like the nursing ratios, how beautiful it was there and I was definitely intrigued so I was like I'm gonna definitely get out there and try to you know this travel nursing thing out so we actually went out to Northern California together um, we were with one of my friends who introduced us and we were all travel nursing for a little bit um, until she went back to New York and then we actually moved in after only dating for about two months which was wild <laughs> looking back um because I was like 22 at the time or 23 it, it just seemed like so young and like just a whole like crazy story um but we got really really close and um the pandemic definitely brought us closer that happened like only a few months after dating like we had just moved in together and then like the whole pandemic broke out um so it was definitely an experience to say the least um, but as we started travel nursing, we did um, step down telemetry, med surge. During the COVID pandemic, we did a lot of ICU work because they were short on ICU nurses. So we were doing like the team nursing model. Um, so we learned a lot of critical care during that time. And we did that for about a year, traveled just up and down California together um, until I was ready for like a little bit more stability. So I started my master's program in nursing education. Um, I was definitely feeling pretty burnt out with the pandemic I definitely wanted to change um before the pandemic I didn't really feel that way I was really happy to be a bedside nurse and was really excited to learn so much but as you guys know after working in the pandemic it definitely changed a lot of everyone's mm -hmm. perspectives I believe um so we worked through that I came back to upstate New York and I worked in the uh, adult cardiac cath lab and I loved it um it was a lot of fun a lot more critical care um, more like one to one ratio or one to two patients, which was very different from med surge. Uh, finished up my education degree and I worked with a clinical nurse educator who um, worked on a cardiology floor and I actually took her job because she left, left the job. So I actually took her job after she left, which was really cool um, because I'd always wanted that job. And I worked with her and she mentored me and I was like, this is the job that I've always wanted. Like, this is the perfect fit for me. 
So um, yeah, about a few years after that, I am now in her job. I have my master's and like I said, I just started as a clinical instructor and a professor for nursing. So really excited about it. Um, so I feel like it's just the start of the career, even though it feels like it's been so many things that we've done. Um, but yeah, I'm just really looking forward to seeing what education's about and just really keep on growing my skills and knowledge. Mm. Oh, going back to travel nursing for a little bit, did you and mm -hmm. Renard work on the same units at the same hospital or did you do separate contracts? How was that dynamics? So when we started, I worked at a really small hospital in um, Nat like Napa Valley area. It's called Petaluma Valley Hospital. It was um, a really, really small, I think it was eight or 70 beds like tiny when I actually pulled up to it was my first travel job it was like I was like is this a farm <laughs> is this a school or something it didn't look like a hospital it looked like a school like a elementary school or something and I was like I must have like the wrong address like I'm a new traveler I don't know what I'm doing it was a hospital um but I like loved it like the patients never left it was like kind of like a rehab almost mm -hmm. but it was a med surge tele floor but um, they stay, would stay forever. So you'd be like, oh man, I know that patient. And you just have them the whole contract and you're like, all right. Um, but so I started in there in Napa Valley and he was in Sacramento. So that's a few hours away from each other. Um, and then my other friend was working in Oakland. So I was actually living in Oakland and commuting all the way to the Napa Valley, mm -hmm. which was horrific. I would yeah. not recommend it at all. I'd drive like two hours in traffic after night shifts. Wow. Ooh bad bad decision but it was all kind of like a last minute thing um her roommate she was going to go with a girl from work and she actually dropped out last minute so i kind of went in with my friend and then bernard was out there as well and we were all friends so it kind of worked out um so after that we went and traveled um in los angeles together um and once we started doing that we would be on the same units Typically we were float pool, so we wouldn't always work side by side. Um, we'd go to different units, but there was a few contracts where we did work side by side together quite a bit. Um, and for the most part, we wouldn't tell any of our coworkers until the end. And it was, it was really funny. It was like the final joke on everybody. <laughs> Cause we, we like wouldn't talk during work. Like we would like help each other like coworkers, but we would never tell anyone anything. And they'd be like, no way. Like, are you kidding me? Like we had no idea. So. That was always really funny at the end. <laughs> yeah, so it's better to like keep things on the low because then like then like you know yeah people try to get you know real, real nosy and some people are like kind of mm -hmm. just assholes. They try to like get in your business and if something happens, it's it's like right. oh it's because they're dating like this and that. You'd rather just not share those kind of kind of politics. How is it? Yes, how is sure. it traveling with uh like as as a couple? Matt and I never experienced traveling as a couple. So so how was that? How was like the I guess the dating life while travel nursing? It was awesome. Honestly, like having the extra income and having so much extra time, you know, working through 12 hour shifts, I felt like the world was kind of ours. Like we'd be like, all right, let's work these days. And a lot of the jobs would give us similar schedules. So we'd be like, let's go on a trip to like Southern California when we were in Northern California. And like, let's do this random thing on like a Tuesday, um, like this concert or this or whatever. And it was so much fun. Um, and also during the pandemic, it was hard, very hard mentally. So it was really nice to be with somebody who really, you know, understood how that I felt and how we, most of us felt, um, because there was just some really hard moments where I feel like if I wasn't with somebody in healthcare, I feel like that would have been really challenging. I don't know if you guys have like, um, experienced this at all, but just that, like knowing that we all have and like the feeling that we all have about it and, like if you weren't in it, it's kind of hard to like relate to it. You know what I mean? Um, so having that like kind of relationship or, you know, those days when you're just like, I just don't want to leave like my house or my apartment or like, you know, or those like do nothing days that are like absolutely necessary in nursing, like having somebody who really understands that was so helpful because for your mental health and your own well-being, that was like totally crucial for the both of us. How is it as a healthcare couple dating, uh, especially maybe on the same unit or in the same hospital? Is there some tips that you can give to anybody that's eyeing somebody on the unit or dating in healthcare in general? What are some boundaries that you set just so the relationship doesn't blend into the profession and you kind of become a slippery slope? Yeah, I think that's definitely important. Um, for us, it was mostly just being private and being really professional. Like I said, 
we would work together or offer a whole contract three months and nobody would know that we were dating. Um, just because for me, I feel like nursing is one of those professions where like things are just very hard on us. You know, you let's like, you're not supposed to have tattoos and you can't have, you know, your ears pierced a certain way and you can't look this way or do that. We're just very strict, you know, like our appearance, the way we act, like the way we're supposed to act on social media, everything's like kind of uniform. So I think that um, to protect yourself, your job and your relationship, I think it's really important to remain really professional. Um, and also if you work in a position and like somebody's your manager and you're working under them, that can also get really complicated as well. So I think just remaining professional as you can. Um, I do believe most workplaces have a policy on at least spouses in the workplace. So looking at that policy, I know sometimes people just can't work on the same unit, but they can work in the same hospital. Um, and just really maintaining your privacy, I think, is the most important thing. Um, but I wouldn't say not go for it. You know, if you see somebody and you start talking and you really like them, don't let just the fact that you work with them um, ruin it for you. And also, if it doesn't go well, there's a lot of other jobs. So you don't have to stay at that job if it, the relationship doesn't go well. So <laughs> yeah, that happens. And then kind of going back to travel nursing, so I know after one year you took your leap of faith. Do you feel like it was enough experience as a nurse in your specialty to become a travel nurse? I know sometimes one year experience could be hit or miss because of how other well hospitals run units and it becomes a, a nerve wreck for a new traveler. Yeah, it was definitely challenging um, beforehand because I knew I wanted to travel. I started taking courses like I didn't have to have ACLS and med surge, and I knew I was going to float a lot as a traveler. So I took ACLS. Um, I took a lot of my own time to study, you know, more than somebody would who I think would have two years experience before starting traveling. Um, I really tried my best to totally prepare myself. And then on another note, like I was saying, when I started as a new nurse, I had so many patients and they weren't always as sick as like a step down patient would be but they were on um, like in California versus like the Northeast. We just have such different laws. Like in California, you can only have a certain amount of patients and you have breaks. So you have time to like sit down and eat and like think clearly. Um, I think that made such a big difference because you had breaks. So that was able to break up your day and really organize your day. And also you had a safe patient ratio. So you knew you were never going over that because it's like at the end of the day, my patient load was pretty much doubled in the Northeast. So I think that really helped me to just feel better about it. I don't think as a new traveler without two years of experience, it would be a good job or a good idea to travel outside of California, just because there are some states, I'm sure as you guys know, that don't really have good laws around nursing and kind of have some really sketchy situations like New York City. You know, I hear about ER nurses having like 10 patients or something insane. So just really doing your research about where you go. I think it's good as long as you commit to it and make sure that you're always giving safe patient care to your patients and making sure that you're taking the time. If you don't know something, you're really asking about it, you're really researching it on your own and that sort of thing. And Lindsay, what made you switch from bedside nursing into more of the educational sphere? Is it something that you kind of always went to nursing thinking about or something that happened along the way? So for me, when I was in nursing school, I always wanted to be a nurse practitioner. That was like my number one goal. I actually almost never worked as a bedside nurse. And I almost went directly into a DNP program right after nursing school. Um, I applied for a job in residence life. I used to be an RA in college. So I applied for a job in residence life that was going to pay for my entire tuition for my DNP program. It was going to pay for me to live on campus. Um, and I would also get a stipend. So basically like live for completely free and get a stipend. Um, I unfortunately didn't get the job, but it wasn't really unfortunate because obviously it led me to where I am today, you know, with my fiance and my degree and all the other things. Um, so that was my original plan. I'm really glad I didn't do that because I learned so much more about what I wanted to do after becoming a nurse, which is what I really recommend to people to at least get a few years of nursing experience before they go back for you know, MP or CRNA or any type of advanced degree, um, even just your master's. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I, when I was starting nursing, I felt like when I was a new grad, there weren't a lot of good resources for new grads. I felt like 
nursing school wasn't always the best path to new grad nursing. I feel like nursing school kind of gives you like the baseline and then you learn everything when you start as a new nurse. And I just felt like that was so steep and there wasn't like those continual check-ins. Like when you start out and you have your three month orientation, you're checked on every week. And then it's like, no one ever checks on you again. And they're just like, oh, they're fine. Um, that sort of thing. When in reality, it's like can be one of the hardest years of your life, both like professionally, emotionally. So for me, what I really learned is like, I started to precept and I really loved precepting. Um, in school, I was a really, really good student. And I also tutored in my undergrad program. So it was always something I knew that I really loved. And then it also like came together with nursing. Like I really loved research and I really loved writing. Um, and my position now I get to write policies and do research. So that was something I really enjoyed as well as like the mentorship and also the education. So that really came together for me. And also with uh, the pandemic and all the things that came with the pandemic, I learned that bedside for me was not really sustainable mentally uh, or physically. It was just really hard on my body, really hard on my mind. Um, and it just came to a point where it just wasn't making me as happy as it used to. It used to make me really, really happy. And I used to be really excited about it. And I felt like when I wasn't in the best space for it anymore, I wasn't the best nurse that I could be. And I always wanted to be a good nurse for my patients. So what I love about my role now in transitioning into education is I still get to see patients um, almost every day. I still get to do skills and I get to talk to patients and I get to educate them and I get to watch new nurses, you know, even experienced nurses, nursing students really gain their skills and confidence um, and also get that patient interaction that I really liked. So it's like the perfect mix of both worlds. You know, I'm not like stuck in a cubicle or anything like that. I would say probably like 60% of my day is spent out on the unit helping patients and nurses and other staff members. And then I would say like 40% is in my office doing research and writing and stuff like that. I want to jump, ju uh, jump into the clinic education part, but I also want to hone in on something you mentioned where you fell out of love in bedside, where it became emotionally too much, both both physically and mentally. So can you touch about that experience? What kind of made you develop you want to say compassion fatigue or getting tired from bedside when you were looking for other options? And when did you know that it wasn't sustainable for you anymore? So I would definitely say before the pandemic, especially when I started travel nursing, I was like, this is the best thing ever. I was like, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. I'm never going to stop travel nursing. I was like on cloud nine. Like I worked at that super small tight knit hospital. I really love my coworkers. I was in California, you know, I've never had sunshine, you know, 365 a year. I was in heaven. I was like, this is amazing. Um, and the job, it wasn't, it wasn't easy. It wasn't a very hard job, but it wasn't, you know, an easy job. I was still a med surge bedside nurse, but I had so much outside of work that I just really loved. And it was so like fulfilling to have this job that was just three days a week. And the rest of my life was like, you know, just out there and adventuring and then I think what the pandemic did is it like took everything away from people who use things to cope, right? So like as travel nurses, I feel like we use traveling to cope and we use money to cope because those are things that make us happy and excited. And those are all fine things to get happy and excited about. But what happens when you take all those experiences away, when you can't leave your house, when you can't travel, when you can't go see, you know, your family, like taking away all those outlets, you couldn't even go to the gym, like you can't exercise, like. I mean, in like any rational scenario, I feel like anyone would kind of lose their mind, right? Um, so all of that. And then it was also a really tough time because the um, murder of, of George Floyd happened. And I had never lived in a big city before. So we were in LA and all of the streets were protesting and there was like fires everywhere. There was like army tanks on every corner, like the big army tanks with like the things and like soldiers and police. And like, you weren't allowed to leave your uh, house past like one o'clock in the afternoon. And we were night shift nurses. So we weren't even awake by then most of the day. So it was like this insane, like intense period of like, just like civil unrest. And then it's like, you don't know what's going to happen to you when you go to work every day, right? We're like rationing masks. We have no hand sanitizer. 
we were donated hand sanitizer by Kylie Jenner, <laughs> which was absurd. <laughs> um, and you just don't even know what's going to happen. Like I was in the ICU and I'd never worked in an ICU, like all these really overwhelming, scary things. Um, and I think at that point, um, that had taken a toll on me and obviously seeing people die so frequently was really, really awful physically. Um, you know, you just be in your contact gown in rooms, like with someone desatting for hours and like, no one's listening to you and you're just like sweating and you're hot and you're lifting really heavy people all the time and you're on your feet. And I just feel like all of it kind of culminated and kind of like came to a head where I was like, this is just not going to work long-term for me. And I'm just not going to be happy doing this. So, um, I left that and I went to the cath lab. And then after the cath lab, I actually did one more travel assignment as a floor nurse, um, in California at a really amazing hospital. It's actually one of the best hospitals in the country. And I, I loved the hospital. It was a phenomenal experience. Everyone was so nice. Like, when I came in, all the doctors were like, welcome. And they like, didn't even know who I was. And I was like, this is really nice. <laughs> um, but after working at the facility and knowing that was like the best of the best, and I still felt so burnt out, even though I had every resource, I had everything, you know, I wasn't even doing crazy amounts of things at my job. Like it was very simple from a job standpoint and I had amazing coworkers and I was like, I still like, I'm very unhappy with this. That's when I knew like, it just wasn't going to get better for me. So that's when I was like, all right, I need to look into a big change um, for myself. And that's the unfortunate part with the bets on everything that you're describing is we as nurses need to do things to cope. Why are we in a profession where we need a little bit of extra or, or whatever dopamine to feel better about a profession where we just wanted to do their, you know, as innocent nursing students to help patients and just do the soul work and then just in turn to, turn into this thing of trying to literally survive and make it every shift or having anxiety to figure out what patient am I gonna, am I gonna get? Am I gonna flow? How is this gonna go down? So yeah, it's, it becomes very tough as a, as a nurse because as a nursing student, this is nothing you expect or sign yourself up for. Now you're kind of stuck just doing this work, which becomes a emotional burden. Mm -hmm, for sure. And then you kind of understand why, for example, when you, when you work staff, you slowly see Coworkers kind of disappear. I'm not sure how long you work staff for, but what I used to work yeah. staff is slowly you start to see coworkers disappear, or their personalities start to start to change. And I think they reach that similar point that that you've reached in, in your nursing career. And you always kind of never really understood why people leave because it's such a good place. Because you're just a a new nurse. You're all you're all happy. You haven't been burnt out yet. You're like you know this is this is great. Like I'm saving lives. I'm making an impact. Why are people leaving? Like, this this is a great spot. But people that have been doing it for five six years. You know, they understand mm -hmm. that it's not it's not always that feeling. There's gonna be a be a point sometimes in people's lives where it's like coming to to the unit becomes a little bit mundane, and you almost lose yourself. It's like you go, you go to work, you do that twelve hours, and you kind of don't know where that twelve hours went to. And when you reach that that point as as a nurse, it's probably a good time to either switch units, try something new, or or just go into go back to school, do some educational stuff because like you're you're losing your drive and your passion for why you started becoming a nurse, and it's going to impact your your day to day it's going to impact how you provide care it's going to impact your whole life and you you don't want to be in like that that mundane state where you have like that great cloud over you yeah and and mm -hmm. for those that are in that state or feeling that burnout or feeling that emotional fatigue what are some ways that it works very well for you as far as for mental health and self care that you use to cope as a bedside nurse yeah. So for me, um, one really important thing for me is exercising. I've always been an athlete, but I feel like when I became a nurse, it became like the most vital thing for me because it just releases so much stress for me. And it just helps me to think clear, it helps so much with anxiety. So I think even if you're not an athletic person, um, just getting some type of exercise every single day, you know, in some way, like, you know, just don't spend the entire day on the couch. Like I know sometimes you really want to, it feels really good. And I've done that before after like a really bad stretch of shifts, but just even get up and walk, you know, it doesn't have to be a marathon, but really getting your body moving, it really does affect your mind and makes your mind feel better. 
Um, I would say that on top of eating just healthier in general, I know a lot of nurses love like takeout and they love, you know, not to cook. I'm definitely guilty of that as well, but what you fuel yourself with is what's going to make you feel better. Like if you eat a bunch of fries and ice cream and then you sit on the couch, all those things coupled are just going to make you your body feel worse and your mind already doesn't feel great, but you're also kind of eating and sitting like that because your mind doesn't feel great. So you kind of got to go in the opposite direction (laughs) of what, you know, you really want to do at that point. Um, So that definitely helped talking to friends and family um, that supported me helped therapy really helps. I think everyone should be in therapy. I'm a huge um, fan of therapy I think especially nurses, because we deal with so much and we internalize so many traumatic things, like what we see is so abnormal and we just treat it like it's normal and it's really not. Um, And I always remember that whenever I have a conversation with non-healthcare people and they're like, oh, that's really awful that like you did that or saw that. And then you're like, oh, you're right. Like it is awful. Like we just kind of talk about it. Like, oh, you know, this happened. And you're like, wait, that's like really terrible. Um, so that's also a really helpful thing. And, you know, it's, it's hard to find, it's definitely a privilege to have access to therapy and it's really hard to find, but if you do have any type of means to do it, um, there's also, you know, if you can't afford therapy, um, or you're having trouble getting with a therapist, there's also videos on YouTube, like guided meditations that can be really helpful in ways to kind of shape your mind and think in a different way to help combat your anxiety or if you have depression or if you're just not feeling great um, that really helps and then I would also say journaling helps a lot really thinking about you know kind of what you've gone through you'd be surprised like you can think about something in your head but when you write it out it can help you to come to a different realization um, about maybe something that happened to you or maybe you're just how you're feeling Um, and that's a nice way for you to like, keep something, maybe you want to keep private, you know, you don't have to talk to everybody about how you're feeling so anxious, but maybe sometimes writing it out, maybe writing out what you can do to combat that can be helpful as well. Um, and I also think just realizing what like the end point is for you. I think a lot of people push way past their end point mentally with nursing. And I don't think that's the best thing to do. I think when you really are realizing like, you know, I can't even go to work without ha- spending half of the night, like anxious that uh, I'm going into work or what my assignment's going to be at that point, you know, it's kind of the time to start thinking about something else. There's so many jobs in nursing too. Don't be like nervous. Cause you've only worked somewhere for like six months. It's, it really, your mental health is way more important um, than your tenor at a job. Yeah. It's almost like the best thing you can do is find a way to help yourself. Because if you help yourself, yeah. you know you're, you're living your life. That's gonna it's gonna project on everybody else around you. It's just you're just gonna to be a general happy person. If you're in a better place, everything just seems in a better place. Right. So, Lindsay, what advice can you give to some new nurses or new nurses coming on a unit, maybe some nurses switching units? Uh, what do new nurses struggle with? So, I think definitely new nurses struggle a lot with confidence, which is definitely something that a lot of new people deal with just in any job, but I feel like in nursing, there's this kind of like concept where people feel like they have to know everything when in real life, that's ridiculous. You could never know everything about the human body and all of the disease processes. Like I literally learn something new at work every day or do something I've never done. Um, So I think confidence and being really hard on yourself. A lot of people are really hard on themselves when they start out in nursing. So just giving yourself a great, you know, grace to do, deal with that and also understand that like everyone makes mistakes um and actually mistakes by documenting them and talking about them can actually help help us to put process processes in place to improve on them later a lot of people are really scared to tell anybody about them but the way that we improve the profession in general is we look at mistakes and we look at what we can do differently in the future um, but I think that's hard because it's, I feel like nursing penalizes a lot of people for a lot of things. Like, I feel like, like I was talking about, like, you have to look a certain way, you have to do this, you have to talk like this, that sort of thing. Um, I feel like there's just that general air about nursing. I'm not sure if you guys have had like a similar experience, but I feel like, you know, nurses can't talk a certain way on social media. They can't, you know, make mistakes. Nurses, you know, are just are supposed to be angelic <laughs> before work, after work, during all of it. Um, so just letting them know it's okay to make mistakes and literally everyone 
makes them and if they say they don't then they're definitely lying right. um so just giving them the comfort to do that and try to find somebody who can be kind of a mentor to you throughout that first year because you definitely need it and then you'll have somebody to be like hey like a month ago like you were only here and like now you're all the way over here and this is the progress you've made because sometimes you can't see it even if it's right in front of your face so having that other person to really see that through for you yeah and try to make some make some friends on unit that always helps everything because because you might not always have the same schedule and you might not always communicate outside of work but somebody you just go into work and you see like your friend they're like oh you're working tonight it's like yeah i am it's like okay for sure and like the the shifts just go by so much smoother you just gotta talk to people and just make some friends because you're there for 12 hours a day three times a week that's a lot of your life is devoted to it and imagine coming to work and not having any friends and not talking to anybody that's going to make those worst days even worse and it's going to make those really good days a little bit a little bit less as 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 good just because you have some somebody to share those moments with you know it's always cool having a funny conversation when you're turning a patient or cleaning somebody up or if like a patient makes you laugh you share it with it with your coworker or your buddy and they laugh too it's a it makes the experience so much more more wholesome in, in a way it does yeah it really does and even as a new grad, just like you said, they lack confidence and they feel like they have to know everything. I feel like both of those go very well because whenever you feel like you have to ask a question, you feel stupid about it because they program you that you need to know everything. And therefore, it's just dwindles your confidence where you feel like you need to exact just know everything. So I think that's uh, that's not a good, uh, what is it called, starting point for new grad nurses, especially starting nursing. What are some of yeah. your favorite aspects uh, as a clinical instructor that you just experienced with uh, your new grads? I think one of my favorite things that I didn't expect going into this clinical instructor job is how vastly different all of my students are. They all come from different backgrounds, different cultures, and like a really big age range. So some of my youngest students are 18 up to, I think one of my oldest students was like in her mid fifties. Mm -hmm. So meeting everybody at their own learning point, right? So that that I was not prepared for at all. Um, and it's something I've had to learn because everyone I've had to teach has been around my age or younger than me. And I feel like that's kind of a more simple way to go about teaching is usually somebody who's kind of in the same age range. So I think really um, having confidence in yourself is really important because um, there will be people who will question you because you look very young or um, you look like, you know, you haven't been a nurse for 20 years, which I haven't. Um, but I think like drawing upon their experiences is really important. A lot of them have had careers in completely different things than you um, have ever done. Like I've only been a nurse as my own career, but um, a lot of them come from completely different fields. So you know, they have skills they can draw upon to apply to nursing. So trying to build that up in their own confidence. Um, like, you know, we have people who work, you know, as like police officers who work in art, like all types of things that you would just not expect. But it's really cool to see everybody come into the profession that um, are so different from each other, too, because we need age diversity, we need, you know, racial diversity, we need all types of diversity. So I really like to see that come together. Okay. And then you're also doing another background, like in research and a clinical setting. Is there anything that you've noticed change over time or maybe something that they do now versus when you were just starting off, they didn't do? Because like friends, for example, my biggest, biggest change that I could really think of right now is, is those, uh, the caps for the lines. I remember when I was in nursing school, we never never had caps on lines. We always just used alcohol swabs. But then I think a year or two into my nursing career, it was a requirement now to put to to uh, put those caps on the hub, and then each line, if it's not connected, you, you got to put a cap on it. That's one of the things that I've noticed over the last couple of years. That's that, that I really noticed that that's changed. Have you noticed any kind of like slight changes like that? Yeah. There's definitely been a lot of changes um, just because I think of staffing in these hospitals, staffing's just gotten like really rough, right? Like over the past few years, I feel like nationwide, it just hasn't been as great. So we've definitely seen a pretty big increase in hospital acquired infections. So I think it's really interesting just learning about like the different initiatives um, that we can do for these patients and really learning like how powerful nursing is like these are all nursing sensitive indicators right so like 
if we're getting clab seas, it's because, you know, our nurses aren't having the time to change the dressing when it gets dirty or change it every seven days, like it's getting missed or they didn't label it and then nobody changes it for, you know, two weeks or something like that. Um, you know, catheters, the same thing, you know, people aren't getting their like CHG bed baths that are helping to prevent these infections. Um, it's really, really wild to see that in data and numbers, you know, as nurses, we know we're very important, but to see it, it's like, wow, like all of these infections are really directly related to nursing. And these are really bad infections that can actually cause, you know, people who are already immunocompromised to actually die. And it's like, that is how important we are. So really seeing how important education is, but as, as well on the lines of that, looking into research and seeing just how um, effective staffing is and keeping, you know, a decent ratio for nurses to patients. That's been the most eye-opening. I feel like I always knew it as a bedside nurse, but to see it like out in numbers is really just a wild thing that I've been learning about when I'm like, you know, tracking infections and things like that in the hospital. That's been one of the most eye-opening things. Are there any traditions that you've realized that we have to switch away from? in the profession as a new generation is coming on and you guys are sharing stories about things that are outdated. One thing I've realized when I started as a nurse was uh, pressing stop on the two feeds when you have the NG2 when you're turning the patient because they could aspirate. And now it seems like it's evidence-based that you won't really aspirate stopping the two feed for a few minutes. And you go to some uh, hospitals as a travel nurse, you're like, okay, well, they still do this. I'm not going to tell her otherwise because she has 40 years experience on me. I'm not going to tell her not to stop the two feeds. And you just kind of go about your yeah. day. But is there some traditions that you notice that are outdated that we should break away from? Um, yeah, I think definitely in nursing culture, for sure. Um, I think some things that were ch changing a little bit. I don't know if when you guys went to nursing school, they weren't allowed to have tattoos like visible mm -hmm. anywhere. Like they would cover up with like, stickers and stuff like that. Um, they just recently changed at one of the schools. They changed the policy that if it's like not offensive, that they can have their tattoos out, which I feel like is really great because it's like you go to the ER, it's like your nurse has two sleeves. <laughs> it's like they're going to do a good job. I don't know. <laughs> like, I'm sure they're going to be fine. Um, so that's definitely interesting. Like being, I'm like the last year of millennial, I'm 96. So I'm like a Gen Z millennial cusp. Um, so coming into, um, an area that's definitely more dominated by, I would say academics is definitely more dominated by older generations. So, um, or older nurses. So I think coming in with ideas and trying to stay positive through them, because, um, a lot of people don't like change. I think in general in nursing, it's not really always very well accepted. So, um, that's something that I definitely want to bring into, especially with nursing schools is kind of bringing that idea that like, it really, it doesn't matter, you know, what you look like or where you came from, you know, or what you believe in. We all have really important skills, you know, that are here for the patient. And I think what makes us unique is what makes us all individually a good care provider. You know, we all draw on these really different experiences, like I talked about, um earlier and those are the most important things so i think that and also just like there's just a lot of like antiquated things you know about nursing school i like to be a realist with the students you know i don't want to paint a picture of nursing that's inaccurate because that would be a disservice to them you know i do tell them i'm like it's a little rough out there <laughs> i'm like i'm like you guys gotta do it with me because when you get out there I'm like i don't know I'm like, if you're, if you do well, you know, you're going to do well, but you just, you got to stick with it. I'm like, but I'm here now to help you. <laughs> um, which I feel like a lot of people don't do, um, because they don't, you know, you don't want to discourage them. Right. And I don't, but I do wish somebody with nursing school was a little more real with me sometimes, <laughs> yeah. you know, are they still doing care plans? They are. <laughs> they are. <laughs> that hasn't changed. <laughs> I feel like that's yeah. just like a. I feel like, them. Mm, I feel like that's just like a <laughs> big thing they push because it takes up a lot of time. So like 
you know, you get your credit hours worth because they could say that it takes like an, an, a student nurse to like eight or six hours to do one. So I guess that's kind of like creditation because otherwise if they get rid of them, they got to fill it with something, you know, right. that's, 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 that's right. my opinion. That's my viewpoint. I don't know how it is. Maybe you can share us, share with us. <laughs> yeah, uh, we definitely still do care plans um, for me mostly. So we usually can choose each week if we do a nursing note, um, an S bar or a care plan. And honestly, I've been skipping the care plans because I've been dreading them a little bit. <laughs> so I'm like, let's do the S bar first and then we'll do the notes. But I'm going to do the care plan eventually. Eventually it'll work out. <laughs> but um, for the most part, yeah, they they don't love those either. Um, but for me, it's like I'm trying to like, make things more realistic, you know, and I'll have them write a note, like the way I would write a note on a patient at the end of my shift. Like, you know, this is how you write a good summary note on a patient. Like, did they have chest pain? Did they have shortness of breath? Are they alert and oriented? Did they have pain? If they did, did you give something? Did it help? Did you reposition them? Just kind of like what you did throughout the shift, just a little, you know, three sentence summary. And um, a lot of them actually like, you know, struggled a little bit at first. Sometimes they can, um, but then, you know, once you explain everything through and really try to work with them through it, um, you'll find that they're pretty receptive and it feels helpful to do something that's just more related to probably what they'll go into. So mm. that's what I try to do. <laughs> Have you even had any like funny, funny experiences uh, during like clinical or during like when you're orientating somebody? Because for me, when it comes to mind where I was orientating a new nurse on a unit and she, she was supposed to give um, some kind of injection like with a needle. So I don't know if it was like a flu shot or, or something. And like, so she gets the stuff, you know, and she goes in the room and she comes out. She's like, the needle bounced off the skin. I was like, what do you mean bounce off the skin? Like, it's supposed to just go through. And she's like, no, it just bounced off the skin. So I'm, I'm confused. I'm like, how did it just bounce off the skin? Like, you didn't, you didn't inject it? She's like, no, it just bounced off, wouldn't go through. So I'm like, okay, let me, let me see this out. Like, let me check this out because it's a patient like that thick of a skin where a needle doesn't go through. And I like walk in the room and a patient looks at me, looks at the new nurse and she tries to give it. And it literally bounces off the skin and like the patient looks at me, looks at her. I'm like, oh shit, that's, a, that's like the beveled needle. Oh my God. Yeah, it's like the nine die injection. You know, I'm like, I felt like, it, I felt so dumb because like the patient's looking at me. Like, why is this, this working? I'm like, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. I'm like, oh shit, that's a, that's a blunt needle. There's not, it's not going to puncture skin. So that was like the one of the funniest experiences I ever had. Because like I got read the, 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 like the student nurse got read. I'm like, oh shit, that's so, that's so wild. You grabbed the wrong needle. And so little things like that where it's just like, like, like you learn yourself and it's just those funny moments that like you share with like a future nurse that, it, that shows like, hey, it's okay to mess up. Like, you know, life moves on. You can always go back and, and fix this. So I'm curious if you had any kind of like funny stories like that. Um, yeah, yeah. We've definitely had some interesting stories. Um, so <laughs> usually I try to teach everybody how to like prime a saline flush because nobody taught me how to do that. Like. Well, I feel like when I became a new nurse, I was like, I didn't know like a way to do it without being messy and like squirting everywhere. <laughs> so um, I would try to, you know, take my time and show all of them. And one of the, one time someone just wasn't listening to my directions and was like, Shh, and it like literally flew like at the ceiling and they were like horrified. It was, <laughs> it was funny though, but I'm like, it's fine. You know, I don't want, I don't like to like penalize people and I never want them to like feel bad. That's like definitely a weakness <laughs> of mine. Um, but I'm just like, you know, things are just going to happen and like, they're just going to be funny. You know, it's like, no one got hurt. We're all fine. <laughs> um, and just trying to work through that, um, is definitely important. And, and, you know, things come up all the time, especially with students, you know, they're, not going to do everything right, you know, especially the first time. So it's really having that grace and a lot of patience. It takes a lot of patience for mm. sure. Yeah, it's funny because like, they think it's like the end of the world where you're like, you know, relax. It's everything's, everything's fine. Nothing happened. You know, everyone's still right. breathing. You know, the heart rate's still fine. You know, just a little bit of saline and just a little bit of this, you know. But they, they think it's <laughs> like they think it's going to fail. They're, they're not going to be a successful nurse anymore. They think about like a career change. It's just like just relax. Just relax. You're fine. <laughs> It's gonna be okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's how I felt because I had this very uh, intense clinical instructor where he just like stared at me all the time. So one time I was given a uh, Lovenox and I think I gave it in the arm instead, and he was staring right at me through the door, man. I'm like, oh, I think I messed up. So he took me and the nurse aside, and he gave her the beat down and me the beat down. Like, yo, this you can't be doing this. It's not evidence based. Not approved by the FDA. I'm like, I'm sorry, man. So it. FDA. I know, I know. <laughs> he, FDA into this? <laughs> yeah, he, 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 was a, he was a tough guy. 
I'm wondering, have you ever considered nursing as a second career? And this is more of a question for a lot of nurse centered or professional right now. They look for side hustles or other things they want to do on the side or potentially go to part time. Have you ever considered that in your nursing career? Yeah, I think I've considered like maybe pursuing um, a hobby, like hobbies of mine that are really important to me. Um, in addition to nursing, uh, I really liked having a nursing Instagram. I haven't really been running it quite as much as I used to. Um, I used to post on it all the time, but I would love to get to a point where I'm kind of like creating my own study guides and um, putting those out there for like NCLEX and different curriculum, like fundamentals of nursing or medical surgical nursing. Because I used to be like, I was the studying pro in my undergrad. Like everyone came to me for study tips. I had like, you would not believe how much study materials I had. It was like borderline horrifying. Mm -hmm. And I would just be in the library all the time. I used to have stacks of cards. Like you would not believe it was wild. But um, yeah, I think that would be something I would love to pursue. And that would be great if that took off enough to, you know, go part-time um, in nursing. Um, I know that would definitely take a lot of work and time, but it's something I'm really passionate about. I love education and I love, you know, overall just being able to help people. Um, and I think I'll always, even if I did something else, um, like, you know, say I got into real estate and got really good at it. I think I would always do some sort, some form of nursing just because I do really still enjoy it a lot, which I know a lot of people are trying to get like completely away from it. Um, but for me, it's like, a really big part of who I am. Like, I really love my career and I know it sounds like a little cliche and we're kind of getting away from like our career is us with nursing. Um, but I don't mean it exactly in that way. I mean it in like a way that I worked, you know, really hard to get where I am today. And I just feel like so fulfilled where I am now. I definitely didn't feel that way like a few years ago, but where I am right now is kind of where I've always wanted to be. Um, before nursing school, I actually really struggled in school. I was like a CD student in the beginning of high school and I got all these tutors and I worked really, really hard. And at the end of high school, I got straight A's and eventually got straight A's in college as well. Um, so I really struggled for a lot of my life and I had a lot of, you know, trouble with school. So having the ability to help people, you know, academically and professionally has like a different amount of satisfaction than it does for the typical person, because I was that person who was, you know, really behind, really slow in class. And then um, I had all these mentors and people who really helped me to become better um, and reach my full potential. So for me, that's like the biggest part for me. Like, like I, out of this like nursing education and clinical professor and all those sort of positions, seeing the growth of people and seeing people like believe in themselves. It's like the most satisfying thing for me ever. Like I literally couldn't describe a better feeling. Mm. Yeah. It's almost, it's almost like that the nurse always stays in you and you always want to like somehow do something or see something that kind of fulfills that, that part of you. Any uh, advice you can give to nurses that are, that want to advance their career, maybe get a master's or NP or their NP or any kind of advanced degree? Yeah, so um, for my degree, I got my master's in nursing education. Um, I would definitely recommend it for anyone who's you know interested in education in nursing. It's not um, a super time-consuming degree in the way that like a CRNA or even NP is. Most of the programs are very flexible. You can do them with a full-time schedule. I worked full-time throughout my whole program. Um, at the end, I just did a capstone that was about 200 hours over two months. So that was probably the most time-consuming aspect of it. And I did like a research-based project that I presented. Um, so I think just making sure you know what you really want to do. Um, don't jump into something just because it's what everyone else is doing. I feel like a lot of um, nurses that I know are kind of just jumping into NP school because that's what they see everybody else doing. And I, I know personally a lot of NPs who aren't really happy with their career. So seeing that is um, definitely important. So like see people in your um, nursing community who do the job. So you come out on Instagram, you know, you can look up hashtags, um, you can look up different things on YouTube, see what they say, DM them. You know, a lot of us are pretty friendly, so we'll respond. Um, and just see if they, you know, really like their jobs. I know there's some MPs who absolutely love their jobs, but I'm just saying like, there's no like cookie cutter way to do it. 
Um, I feel like a lot of people don't go into education because it's not really something they know about. Um, so I think just exploring all of the options. Um, but like I said, it's very easy to fit in with your schedule. The master is in nursing education. You don't have to give up your whole life. Um, it is, you know, a financial commitment um, for a lot of people. But if it's something that you really want, I would totally recommend it after one or two years of nursing experience um, at the least. And I think that's a beautiful part about our career that you can mold it however you want to do bedside, try out some traveling, see how other states are, come back to clinical education if you want to and become a CRNA if you want to. So it's very flexible to be a part-time nurse to be a mother. And it's just, uh, I tell everybody, if you want flexibility and just to switch things up, nursing is one of those things that you can do. And if it gets old, you could always switch it up. Just like you said, in between went to the cath lab and still had a probably good experience in between becoming an instructor. Mm -hmm. So one yeah, last question sure. we like to ask all of our guests, if you had the opportunity to have a cup of coffee with anybody one last time, who would it be and why? Oh boy. I would probably say my grandma Pam because she um, passed when I was 16. So she was the first person I lost in my life. And she was like a huge cheerleader for me and doing, you know, big adventures and stuff. Um, one of the last times I talked to her, I was going on a trip to Spain for with my history class for high school. So I think just being able to sit down with her and talk about, you know, all the things I've done since then, like, you know, traveling in California and New York and Massachusetts and um, getting my master's and getting married, you know, now. Um, I just think that would be a really cool conversation. So even though it's been, I'm 26, so it's been 10 years. So it would be wow. a really cool 10 years to recap. Yeah, super cool. Yeah, thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah, of course. And Lindsay, we just want to acknowledge you for your time for being on the show. Thank you and sharing your wealth of knowledge and clinical education, travel nursing, and what it's like to be a couple as a healthcare professional. So thank you for that. Congrats on your guys' new adventure coming sooner. You guys are getting married this year. Yep. Our, well, January 2024. 2024. Okay, that's right. Oh, Next year. Yeah, yeah we're close. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it could be a little bit stressful. So yeah, thank you for being here and maybe we'll see you again. Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. And then Lindsay, uh, where can people find you if they want to just follow you or ask you some questions? Um, so my Instagram is lost with Lindsay. Um, and I spell my name with an EY. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, for sure.